Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So today we're talking about an indie game that's called Bladed Fury. This came out a couple of weeks ago if you haven't heard of it. So without further ado, let's make a start on that review. To sum up the story very quickly, you take control of a princess who's been accused of murdering her father, and the aim is to try and defeat the enemy in order to prove your innocence. The first thing you notice about when you're playing the game, it starts off very simplistic, you just have um, basic hack and slash buttons, and gradually as you make your way through the game, you start to unlock different moves and different weapons to make the game slightly more challenging. I think this is really good as it allows the game to be open to lots of different levels of gamers and also different age groups as well. I really wasn't overwhelmed which made the game a lot more fun and I was able to gradually learn things as I went through the game rather than being given too much information at once. The comic book art style means I think this is open to probably a lot more age groups as it's not too violent and there's not too much blood or gore on the screen so I think even relatively young children would be fine to play this game. This game is a very addictive game. It is only short, I completed it in about five hours so just a full afternoon of gaming but it is very very addictive, you want to carry on playing so maybe we'll get a second game or hopefully a bit more DLC but it is a very very fun and addictive game. You can see from the gameplay footage here, the game plays a lot like a graphic novel or a comic book where the speech isn't in English, so you do end up having to read on the screen. But it's really, really great artwork. The artwork is so lovely to look at. So if you really enjoy kind of comic books or you like cell shaded games, then I really can't recommend this game enough. As with all of my reviews, all of the gameplay and footage is taken from handheld mode. Now I have watched a couple of other reviews who spoke about some frame drops. I actually haven't experienced any frame drops or certainly frame drops that I can notice. I'm sure if you run this through your computer you might be able to see some frame drops. But to the naked eye, I haven't noticed any issues with it and it hasn't stopped me from enjoying the game at all. As I said earlier on, the game is predominantly a hack and slash game. There are a few little puzzles to solve throughout the game, but they're not particularly challenging, so I don't think you'd have any issues with them. They may take a little bit longer to solve for some people, but it just adds in a little bit of an extra challenge throughout the game. The best thing about this game is the art style and the music. They both work so well. The graphics on this game I think look fantastic for an indie game. It's obviously not up there with maybe a AAA game, but it certainly looks fantastic visually, especially in handheld mode. And then the music just accompanies the game so well as you're playing through. They really do go well hand in hand together. When you play through the game, you gradually start to unlock new moves that you can either purchase at save points, or when you defeat a boss, you unlock their move and you can use that yourself. Now these add to combos and they obviously make the game a little bit easier because when you get lots of enemies on the screen, you can use these more powerful moves and it looks great as well. So again, graphically, they've done that really, really well. It has been very difficult to actually pick faults with the game. Graphically, I can't fault it. I haven't experienced any bugs or anything like that. I love the gameplay. The game itself is absolutely brilliant. It's got a great story. But I do have to find, obviously, some negatives when I'm doing a review. And I've got to actually focus, sadly, on the price point of the game. So on the eShop, I picked this up for £15, which is not a bad price. But to buy this game physically, 
It's $27.99 currently on Amazon, which for a game of roughly five or six hours worth of gameplay is a little bit poor. Obviously some collectors will still pay that price, but my advice to you if you are going to pick this game up would be to get it on the eShop at £15 or maybe just wait for a sale. I think anything under £15 is a great purchase. Anything over that, I think you're paying too much money for the game. Just to finish off, I think if you've enjoyed Immortals Phoenix Rising, I really think you'll enjoy this game. It's almost like a very simplified version of Immortals Phoenix Rising. But I just want to say thanks a lot for watching this review. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel, hit that like button, and then leave a comment below of any games you'd like to see me review as well. Thanks a lot for watching everyone.